Have you ever sat down and thought about what makes your favorite game or favorite genre just so much fun to you? And I mean the very specific aspects of it, like why do you gravitate towards metroidvanias or roguelites or first-person shooters, for example? What are the aspects of that specific genre or a specific game in that genre that draws you to it over and over again? Chances are you have a favorite genre or a favorite game and you've you've sought out games like it. Say your favorite game is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, so you search around for top-down 2D adventure games with item collection as a primary focus and puzzles and dungeons and stuff like that, but nothing ever really quite hits the mark. Chances are pretty good that you've tried one of these, I guess, clones, for lack of a better word, and you've been less than excited, less than impressed by it. And this especially is going to happen if you play a lot of games. But recently, I've played a few games that claim to be something, but they, they're missing the magic that I love about that specific genre. And we're going to go over two of these specific examples today as part of my own anecdotal and opinion-based evidence. So let's get into it. The first is a game called Dead Cells. This is a 2D action-adventure platformer that bills itself as a roguevania. That's a portmanteau of a portmanteau. That's It's combining roguelite with metroidvania, which metroidvania itself is a portmanteau between Metroid and Castlevania. And metroidvania games tend to have a large interconnected map with a big emphasis on exploration, backtracking, and power-ups and those power-ups will allow you to explore more and unlock more areas. This is one of my favorite genres, hands down. I love the exploration aspect, I love the power-ups. It just, it feels good to me. But then you have Dead Cells come in, and while it's a great game in its own right, I take issue with the fact that it calls itself a Metroidvania at all. And that's because of the other half of this weird combination of genres, the roguelite, which tends to have permadeath aspects, and while it, it can increase your power from run to run, the permadeath aspect is meant to start you from the beginning with little to nothing to go off of. It also tends to have a randomly generated map. If you take these two genres, the roguelite and the metroidvania, something has got to give. You can't have something that's primarily exploration based with backtrack and lots of permanent upgrades that increase your movement and power throughout the game, and then something that introduces permadeath and procedurally generated maps and power resets every time you die. They don't work together, so you've got to make sacrifices in one or the other. And I think because of the way these two genres work, the roguelite aspects get precedent here. You can't take away the procedurally generated maps and the permadeath while still being able to maintain the label of roguelite. So what Dead Cells has done is they've gotten rid of the large interconnected world, they've made exploration less interesting with procedurally generated maps with an inability to backtrack, but they managed to keep, at some level, power progression with permanent movement upgrades. The one I've seen so far lets you tickle a goo pile so you can grow a vine so you can get some extra weapons or something to help you during that run. And that's something you unlock in a previous run, and that helps you in the next run. Eventually, the game's also going to have branching paths, but come on, that does not make a Metroidvania. You might be wondering, hey, Ingenious Clown, why are you taking such issue with this? I'm taking an issue with it because it's calling itself a Roguevania. What it doesn't say is that it's a roguelite with inspiration taken from the way Metroidvanias tend to work, which is something that I would accept. There's a huge difference between saying you are a Metroidvania versus you are taking some ideas and aspects from what a Metroidvania is and then trying to fit them into the roguelite formula. There's a huge difference here, and it makes a difference. It's the same reason why roguelite and roguelike are completely different entities. Like I said, Dead Cells is a very fun game in its own right. As a roguelite with a fresh take on run progression, it's a very interesting experience, and I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. But going into it expecting it to be a Metroidvania, I was disappointed on that front, even though I found the rest of the game pretty solid. 
Now remember, Dead Cells is in early access, so who knows what they may or may not do to just completely prove me wrong, but I don't think that these two genres can mesh together in a way that doesn't sacrifice too much of the other. Anyway, let's move on to the next example that I have, and that's a game called Rogue Islands. Again, this is another game that's in early access, so everything that I say here is subject to change, and hopefully they, they prove me wrong by the end of their development cycle. But what Rogue Islands is, is a first-person roguelite. The aesthetics sort of remind you of Cube World or Trove with the, uh, with the small voxels and the bright colors and the cartoony aesthetics, and it looks great. It plays pretty well. It's got some interesting quests and an interesting premise and a pretty interesting world and some pretty interesting gameplay. But here's my issue with it. It's a roguelite, but each run doesn't feel distinct. Now here's the thing. A roguelite can mean many, many things. The subgenre was popularized whenever The Binding of Isaac went just super viral. And ever since then, people have been obsessed with the permadeath and the crazy upgrades and stuff like that. So there's been so many of them that have been popping up ever since The Binding of Isaac got hugely popular. And this is no different. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because the more games we have, the better. As long as they're not like half-assed crap like what Digital Homicide would churn out on a daily basis. But I digress. More games, good. Roguelite or not, good. It feels like a lot of people are taking the roguelite aspects, especially the permadeath and procedurally generated maps, tossing it into a game and calling it a roguelite, without understanding what made the Binding of Isaac so much fun. Here's the problem that, currently, Rogue Islands is having for me. I've already mentioned that each run in Rogue Islands doesn't feel distinct. Sure, you can die and you start over with nothing, which means you have to re-level up your spells, but you can re-level up your spells in a different order or with different priorities, but that's a decision that's based solely on you. So far as I've seen, there, are, there aren't any crazy items to change the way you play, or change your jump height, or reduce fall damage, or make you run faster, or, or give you temporary spells, or anything like that. There's nothing to make each run completely different other than the fact that each island is completely different. And at that point, it's just like No Man's Sky. One of the reasons No Man's Sky was a joke whenever it came out is because the gameplay never expanded past your first one or two hours of the game. It never changed, it never got more complex, it never got more interesting, it never got wild, it never got crazy. It just was, and it coasted on that. And so far, Rogue Islands has that problem for me. Binding of Isaac, on the other hand, your entire run can feel completely different by the time you enter the first item room. You might bomb a tinted rock, you get a small rock that increases your damage by a pretty significant amount at that stage of the game, and suddenly you're just plowing through that first floor and you can have a much easier time with the boss than you might have had otherwise. Or you go into the first item room and you end up with Tech X, which lets you lets you fire a circular laser beam that will just destroy enemies in its path, and that will also change the way that you play in a significant manner. These are the kinds of crazy things that makes the game so wildly replayable. It's the reason why it got popular. It managed to find the right formula with the right order of operations. And again, like I said, the game is still in early access, and who knows what they're going to be changing in the future. I, I hope for their sake, and I guess for all the people who buy its sake, because, you know, more fun games is always good, that they eventually come up with a way to make the game more interesting from run to run. Because as it is right now, it's just a single-player adventure game with permadeath, and that's too bad. It could be so much more. But like I said, we'll see what comes out of it in the coming months. But that thing that I said about the right formula with the right order of operations, that can go with any game. Any game that you can say is your favorite, or any genre that you are particularly drawn to. While there is no one single formula or one single order of operations, if you're going to be inspired by a specific genre, you need to be able to pinpoint the exact reasons why you yourself want to make a game in that genre. What is it that you want to see? What is it that, as a player, you would have a problem with? What was? What is it, as a player, will keep you coming back 
over and over again to face these challenges. But you know what? At the end of the day, everything in this video is completely opinion-based. There are probably people who have played Rogue Islands and think it's probably the best thing ever because it doesn't have that crazy randomness of some of my favorite roguelite games. That's just the way it is, and it all really depends on the developer and what their goals are. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section below, so please don't hold back. Am I being ridiculous, or do you agree? And let me go ahead and apologize for the lack of videos lately. I've, uh, I've been taking on way too many projects all at once, and it's like, it's, it's holding me down. But I promise we'll get some really interesting stuff sometime soon. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below, and like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you hated it, and don't forget to follow me at IngeniousClown on Twitter if you use Twitter. And be sure to subscribe for more videos in the future, and if you want to be notified of every video that I release, be sure to hit that bell and select to be notified, and I will see you next time.